In this recording, we're going to talk about cardiovascular drift. This is a phenomenon that occurs during prolonged, constant, steady state exercise. Okay. So the key here is that the intensity of the exercise is constant, it's not changing, and it's a steady state intensity, so it's a submaximal intensity. Okay, and remember we've already established that uh, the amount of work you do determines the amount of ATP you need, which determines the amount of oxygen you need, which determines the amount of cardiac output you need. Okay? And cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. All right, so you are at a constant intensity, and therefore the work is staying the same, and so the need for cardiac output stays the same. <clears throat> but what we see over time if the, if the environment is hot or humid and the intensity goes long enough, core body temperature will rise. Okay? So basically, you're producing more heat, you're also removing more heat, but if you get to the point where you're producing heat faster than you're removing it, core body temperature is going to rise. This increase in body temperature is going to trigger a reduction in stroke volume. Okay? which at first seems puzzling because we don't want stroke volume to decrease, right? That's a problem because stroke volume is helping to maintain cardiac output and the work level is not changing. So um, this is a problem if stroke volume drops. Okay, but before we talk about that, let's talk about why it's dropping. So as the body heats up, one of the ways the body cools itself is it sends more blood flow to the skin where we can dissipate heat into the environment. So how this occurs is we get more vasodilation to the arterioles in the skin. Okay, so we get um, increase in radius. This is going to result in more blood flow to the skin. Okay? And if we've got more blood flowing to the skin at any moment in time, we are going to have less blood flowing back to the heart. We're going to get a reduction in venous return. Now if you go back to what we've talked about with stroke volume, we've established that a reduction in venous return is going to cause a reduction in stroke volume. Okay, So just to review that, decrease in venous return causes decrease EDV, which causes a decrease in preload which causes a less optimal length tension relationship, a reduction in elastic recoil, which is going to cause a, a reduction in left ventricular contraction strength, okay, which also causes a reduction in left ventricular pressure, which will reduce the blood pressure gradient between the left ventricle and the aorta, which is P1 minus P2, okay, and this is P1. <clears throat> if P1 is dropping, then the gradient between P1 and P2 is dropping. This causes a reduction in stroke volume, okay? So that's the reason why stroke volume is reducing. Stroke, stroke volume is being reduced, okay? Now this is going to trigger an, uh, a negative feedback response, okay? Because if stroke volume drops, cardiac output is going to drop. Okay? And this is a problem because you're at a constant workload, and if cardiac output drops, the oxygen supply, the ATP is going to uh, ATP supply is going to drop. So the body needs to react very quickly in order to get cardiac output to come back up. And so the response to this reduction in stroke volume is then an increase in heart rate. Okay? Because if heart rate increases, that can make up the difference for the reduction in cardiac output. Okay? Cardiac output can go back up to where it was, where it needed to be. Okay? and we have, our, we have our negative feedback, okay? 
Actually, it goes this way. Yeah. So we have our negative feedback. So in cardiovascular drift, cardiac output is maintained. Okay. So basically, we get uh, vasodilation to the skin, okay. which causes a reduction in venous return, which causes a reduction in stroke volume, causes a reduction in cardiac output. Okay. This triggers a negative feedback, okay, where heart rate increases so that cardiac output can come back up to where it needs to be. Okay. So cardiac output over time is maintained. Okay, so we have a reduction in stroke volume. We have cardiac output being maintained. All right. Other things that are occurring during cardiovascular drift, remember, the body is heating up. Okay, when the body heats up, you sweat. Okay, when you sweat, you lose water. Okay, some of that water is going to come from the plasma. Okay, and so we're going to get a reduction in blood volume. Okay, a reduction in blood volume, remember earlier in this chapter, reduction of blood volume also contributes to a reduction in stroke volume. Okay. So the longer you go and the more you sweat, the more stroke volume is going to decrease, the more heart rate is going to have to increase to compensate and maintain cardiac output. We also see changes in blood pressure. This is a little more complicated. Let's look to see what's happening with blood pressure during cardiovascular drift. And whenever blood pressure comes up, you should always write the formula Okay, we've already established that during cardiovascular drift, cardiac output doesn't change. Okay? Heart rate goes up, stroke volume goes down, but cardiac output doesn't change. So if that's the only thing happening during cardiovascular drift, blood pressure wouldn't change. But there are some things going on with peripheral resistance. So we established that you're losing plasma. Okay, and if you lose plasma, your blood will become more viscous. Vis, viscous. Okay, so we may see an increase in viscosity during cardiovascular drift. Okay, we won't see any changes in vessel length because that's not going to change on an acute basis. However, with all of the vasodilation, Okay, we're getting a lot of vasodilation of the arterioles to the skin. This is causing an increase in the overall radius in the body. So we have two different things happening here that could affect peripheral resistance. We have an increase in viscosity, which would increase peripheral resistance, and we have an increase in radius, which would decrease peripheral resistance. Okay? But remember that radius increases to the fourth power. Okay, so small changes in radius are going to cause large changes in peripheral resistance. And so the overall effect on peripheral resistance is that it's going to go down. And if peripheral resistance goes down, cardiac output stays the same, the overall effect on blood pressure will be a reduction. Okay, so as you can see on this chart, we see that over time cardiac output is maintained, stroke volume goes down, heart rate goes up, 
blood volume goes down, okay, that's as you're sweating and you're losing plasma and you're losing blood volume, and mean arterial pressure goes down. Okay, so this is overall the factors that occur during cardiovascular drift, increased heart rate, we maintain cardiac output, we lose blood volume, we get a reduction in blood pressure, and a reduction in stroke volume. And that's cardiovascular drift.